Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe. Here with me is my co-host Dan. Hello and greetings. And we're going to make this one a quick one because this last story is just terrible. Well, this entire book's been pretty bad. Idaho is the main character of part three. He's jealous of his brother who is going out with a chick called Bariama whom Idaho kind of wants. But then he thinks to himself, I don't really want her. I want this chick Moxley. He wants a harem, I guess. He comes from the Whitetail tribe rather than the direct line of succession that is the Pathfinder's one. I think. It's not exactly clear. His brother dies in chapter 23 in a battle against a legion that serves Ishtar. So he becomes a guerrilla fighter, forcing a few other tribes to join him. It seems the thing to do. Ultimately starts to ambush Sylvanesi elves, who basically have nothing to do with Ishtar. Some have something to do with Ishtar. In particular, he likes to ambush caravans carrying the singers of Sylvanesti to Ishtar. So obviously he's an innocent in all of this. Might as well be kicking puppies and taking candy from Sylvanesti babies. Yeah, and he eventually finds a young elf maiden from Sylvanesti and basically tells her after kind of, well, first he kind of raids the group alongside the rest of his raiders and then tells her, right, your protectors and fellow clerics are dead now. I'm ordering you to basically be my, okay, what term should I use? Concubine. You're my trophy. And you're now a wild elf, effective immediately. Obviously, the lady doesn't get the choice. The book tries to present it as though she chooses this, but he commands this to her. So basically, we have uh, a guy who really gets on with Chinggis Khan here, who's a wild elf. The rest of the book is basically his series of screw-ups. And the idea is essentially that this story is the Kaganesti reaction to the fall of Istar. And I gotta say, you almost forget that. There's so little to do with Istar. This story is so vaguely connected and so easily disconnected from Istar. You forget that it's almost in the time of Istar, even though the timestamp is at the beginning of this part of the book. Then suddenly, oh, right, we're we're in the age of Istar. Uh, we'll just have a mountain displaced or something. There have been several books on the fall of Istar. You have the King Priest trilogy. You have the legends with the time of the twins. You have... I think of one of the Feast on Dantalus books and a few others, along with an anthology or two, which have broached the topic of Ishtar and have, are some of the best stories in Dragonlance. Then we get this one, which has nothing to do with any of them, which it would have been nice had the, these characters had anything to do with it, but no. So overall, and I'm going to say it's a zero. A zero. And it's like, what is the plot? You have several different plot lines. Zero. And the time skip. We're not going to be dealing with Kaganesti any longer. The entire book, I would say, is probably a quarter star book at the highest. Yeah, Sylvanoth. You had to bend over backwards just to save this piece of trash. The next book club podcast we're going to do for Dragonlance is Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Thank heavens, we're finally there. We're skipping a lot in the timeline, but we're going to go back to the prequel era at some point because we do want to read all of Dragonlance. But next time, we're not we're not going to do Dragons of Autumn Twilight. Probably going to do analysis of the relationship between Raceland and Tasseloff Burfoot. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were the gods chucking a meteorite at Istar. 